with your mouth all glued up with Connie juice, I asked you a question. Oh my God, this girl's really turning me on. Suck me sideways. Are you going to pull those pistols and whistle Dixie? Hollywood's Motorcycle Madhouse on iHeartRadio. And welcome, this is James Hollywood Macho Perry, and we got a special episode of Motorcycle Madhouse, episode 51. Right now, i got Mac on the line. He is from the Kazakh One Percenters, and he wanted to come on and try to explain some stuff that's been going on out there that's been going around on the Internet and uh, actually on the street as well. And this is his opportunity and his club's opportunity to put their side of the story out because, as everybody knows, and saying throttle gives everybody a chance to put their side of the story out there. And that way, everybody can make their mind up, having you know both sides of the information. So right now, I got Mac on the line with the Kazakh One Percenters. How you doing, Mac? Uh, I'm doing pretty good, man. How are you? Ah, doing pretty good, man. It's uh, getting end of summertime up here, and uh, it's already dark up here. And I hate when that starts happening because you know, uh, right now that means that it gets darker earlier. The winter's fucking coming, and the bike season's almost over. So it sucks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Down here, we've been uh, and we've been working like crazy. Uh, it's been raining the last few days, and uh, we got a Texas state run going on, which is where I'm headed to now. Uh. Uh, you know, down in uh, Central Texas. So uh, on the way down, I figured I'd give a call. I've got flooded with some calls and questions going on about the stuff that's been going on over the last few weeks. With uh, well, there has been know. a lot. There has been a lot going around uh, the last <sighs> few weeks. Uh, you know, we've been inundated with uh, emails and uh, calls on the hotline. I know. IOTC has had some stuff up and a whole bunch of other sites. And a lot of people are confused uh, right now. And I'm glad you're on the line to help clear everything up, put your side of the story up. And uh, actually, I was sent a link to your website where you uh, made a statement about uh, Big Pete. What was that all about? You know, I had uh, multiple calls, uh, clubs reaching out from all over wanting to know what was going on. You know, there's pictures of Big Pete in your club or, or you know, a few of your members, and uh, we're here, and he's going to start a chapter. You know, and I just basically told him, you know, he is somebody that we, we ran across on this, this Internet, this Facebook. Uh, uh-huh. Told us a story. Oh, you know, I'm I'm out on the outlaws. Uh, I got sick. I was on medical leave. Uh, some youngsters in the club that was coming up through the ranks, you know, that I gave hell to when, when they were coming up, you know, basically pushed me out. Mm-hmm. And, you know, when nothing more than just some stories back and forth, uh, most anybody can relate. Uh, we started somewhat of a, I wouldn't even, you know, I say a, a friendship, you know, talking back and forth. Mm-hmm. You know, and we and I talked with, with some other people, and they were like, "Man, there's all these weird stories, these all these stuff on the internet, all these biker websites. How, oh, I had to do this to get a support patch, or you have to go through this to get a support patch that's signed by a chapter president." And I was like, "Who ever heard of that? Right. You want a patch? Or ten dollars? Or the twenty? Right? Uh, and so the stuff, you know, the the site that he started, Biker's Better School." seem to be something to help educate the younger people, you know, the younger crowd or the people mm-hmm. who's older and, you know, trying to come to the club scene. And just to cut all the nonsense out, you know, if they want to ask something, you can hear it from somebody who deals with it firsthand. Right. And, you know, <clears throat> after some time, you know, uh, I had some business, you know, up in Wisconsin anyways. So we was riding up along, me and a couple of guys, and we went up, uh, you know, met Pete and a few other guys, had a, mm-hmm. a, a, a party over the weekend, you know, like a Saturday deal. We went on, took care of our business, and we rode on home. Right. But, now, you're uh, talking about that, uh, you're talking about that party, fest. that Rosie's Fest. Yeah. Now, is the rumors true where, you know, I just like to ask you because you just said you were there. 
the rumor is true that he didn't show up on Friday night, and when he did come on Saturday, it was only for two hours and left with all those people that came from all over the place. Man, there were guys who come from East Coast. Uh, uh, I'm not gonna throw no names. Uh, guys mm-hmm. that came from by Canada. Of course, me and some guys rode up from Texas. You know, we, we got the meeting, and you know, we was all you know, chitting and chatting. You know, if he was there maybe an hour, half, or two hours, something along the lines of that. But, you know, then he left. Mm. You know, and, you know, hell, the party went on for a while. Uh, me and me and, and a few bros, we left, and we rode on up to Wisconsin, up to up in, in, uh, Kenosha, out there on, I guess it's the Great Lake or one of, or, or like, like one of the Great Lakes to the, the Light Tower. Right. Had dinner, you know, just kind of seen it view. But I just kind of found it kind of weird, you know. We wasn't there no time, and somebody had said, "Hey, man, we we heard there might be some trouble." And you know, at that point, I made it very clear: "Whoa, we come up here to go to Wisconsin. We stop by. Right? We're up here on our own. We ain't up here to back nobody, and we ain't up here to bother nobody." Oh, if somebody else has called and said there's going to be issues, that's y'all's problem. It ain't ours. Right. And, you know, uh, maybe whatever the reason, not everybody had hung around, you know, for, for very much longer. We stayed for a while and, and enjoyed it. But then, it's like I said, we had other things to do up north. So we, uh, mm-hmm. we left and went sightseeing. Right. Now, with this BBS stuff, uh, you probably heard me all over the place. You know, it is a good idea, but the guy running it, uh, you know, how can you have a guy running it who's out bad as he was and held on to his club property until just a couple weeks ago, and when he finally turned it in under all the pressure, it was a woman that turned in the fucking uh, property, not him. He was nowhere to be found from what I've been told. So, how is a guy like that able to run a uh, biker better school, or you know, the BBS as they call it, and preach the way he does when it's quite the opposite of what uh, really he is? Exactly. You know, I was a really big advocator on the BBS because you know, for education, uh, mm. it wasn't until it was one of the live videos, and uh, he had said something. He was in. He was upset about something, and he was like, well, you know, I got bagfuls of, uh, uh, I'll just say AOA property. You know, maybe I should just sell it on the Internet. And that kind of hit a nerve. I was like, ooh. You know, that's and after, uh, after that, I started exposing them. That's when he came out with that video. Yeah, yes. Uh, you know, and after that, you know, after that video, I had some guys reach out to me, and they were like, hang on a minute. That don't sound right because. You know, Matt, you had fiercely mm-hmm. made sure that if we came from another club that you checked into us, you made sure that we just either decided to go a different route <clears throat> or maybe, you know, the chapters had fell apart or for whatever the reason that we want a chance to come and hang around and prospect in you. You made sure that we had all of our property returned. And mm-hmm. if, you know, and uh, he says, you know, the guys heard that and they're like, hang on a minute, he's bragging about it. You know, and this guy's, you know, somebody that, you know, when we're not busy, we listen to sometimes. Because he's got some good stories, man. I will give him that. Most any biker can not relate to that. Mm-hmm. You know, but, uh, yeah, once we heard that, that's when I had, uh, I really had no option. And I'm not going to throw no names. I'll just say that. You know, I used some of my old friends to uh, reach out to the AOA, and then I got their side of the story. And when I got that side of the story about the real reasons, you know, I had me, my guys, our supporters. I said, look, you know, we thought this guy was going away. I'll take it. It ain't nobody's bad but my own. Mm. But now we know the real the real story. Uh, no. This dude wants to promote BBS. Or education, I understand that, but you can't preach it if you don't walk it. Mm. And, you know, at that moment, I was just, I kind of felt compelled to, you know, apologize to the AOA 
because I almost feel like I kind of stepped on some toes of what needed to be stepped on. All right. I did was reach out, and here's a guy, and uh, he's got a lot of history, and, you know, we're going up that way anyways. We'll stop by and say, hey. And then it gets per, it gets preceded that, well, he's going to be a, a 1% or Cossack. He's going to start an Illinois chapter. Whoa, mm-hmm. breaks, breaks, breaks. Right. There won't be no – we have many guys in other states uh, – We'll announce it when it needs to be announced, but guess what? I remember a time when it used to be cool to be secretive. Mm -hmm. Why should you announce every little move you make? Exactly. Well, it used to be where you never announced any moves. Exactly. Unfortunately, in these days and time with the social media, you know, the Facebooks and then the the different different platforms, you can reach out and, and find out, you know, I know in the old days coming up, you might have a guy who's been in your club two years. You mm-hmm. didn't know, you know where he came from because he said, but you wouldn't find out something on him, you know, until you came across that other club and were like, hey, hang on a minute. This guy's from Mississippi or this guy's from Georgia or this guy's from here and he did this, this, and this and we put him out. Right. Well, now social media, everything gets streamlined a lot quicker to know. Yep. <laughs> you know, whatever gave him the idea that uh, he can go out there and, you know, basically put you guys on the front street. You know, I have no idea. Uh, like I said, man, we had a lot of conversations. Uh, I, I wouldn't know why he would go out and maybe per se that, well, I'm going to be a 1% Cossack. I'm going to start a chapter, and, and, or, or it, it, there must be other biker sites where it's been said. I don't know. I don't really do the whole social media too much. Mm. But I just know here, Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi, I've got a lot of phone calls, and I'm like, now this guy's, you know, somewhat of a, you know, of a, of a, somewhat of a friendship from up north, but no. Mm. Uh, other than that, I wouldn't know which way that it would come from. Right, right. Now, a lot of people <clears throat> are talking about, because he's going around parading uh, a T-shirt of yours. Can you tell me about that? Well, there's a T-shirt that was made. Uh, I'm not going to go into a lot of it. I'll say the Waco 7, the Legends, the the T-shirt with the the, the brothers of ours who died in Waco. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not a support shirt. By no means, it's more of a of remembrance of that day when the government, you can say Texas DPS, McLennan County, you can go on and on. But that day when the government said that they protected, they didn't. They could have, if they had mm-hmm. the intel they said they had, they could have stepped in and diverted like they do up north. Hey, these guys are here. Well, you know, you uh, let, me, uh, let me interrupt you there uh, so I had to tell my audience. I really don't want to get into much of the Waco stuff right now. Gotcha, gotcha. gotcha. Uh, just because uh what's going on down there. And, uh you know, as far as the T-shirt, it's basically in remembrance of the Waco 7. Yes. We and use if that, anybody that wants money. to know about Waco, they can go somewhere else to find it because, quite exactly. frankly, I got cops that listen to this fucking show, and you know how them pricks are. So yeah. that but, shirt uh, is nothing more than a, a, a shirt that, that that is sold. That money goes towards the, the mothers, the kids who were affected. Mm-hmm. Uh it's not it's there's no support your local Cossacks, there's no support your no no club. It's just the remembrance mm-hmm. of, of government overreach that happened in May two thousand and fifteen. Okay. So basically, you know, people seeing him wearing that shirt, uh it's not a support shirt, it's not a member shirt. <clears throat> yes, yes. We we have sold that shirt honestly, we have sold that shirt all over the world. Okay. Uh, can't quote you on exactly exactly what other countries, but it's in many. Right. Well, it's a great. You know what? It's a great idea, and I know the people that's been affected by it. You know, probably really appreciates it. Uh, yes. But again, I you know let's not dive down that alley. Gotcha. Because, uh, you know. You know, Raina's office really don't like uh, us over at Insane Throttle. We get uh, <laughs> inquiries from his freaking, uh, you just see it coming in from his servers and stuff. So I'd really like, uh, just to go to a different subject, uh, 
As far as gotcha. BBS is concerned, uh, you, you know what? You were right. I did uh, support the ideal of it being an educational type of deal, but some, you know what? There was a lot, some problems that came out of the BBS, and how how is that working? Are you you guys are not part of the BBS anymore, right? No. Um, from a club perspective, uh, finding out that. <clears throat> You know, the truth and the reason why, you know, he was put out and that, you know, even being put out, mm. you know, kind of like just this George Christie. Right. You know, he got put out. He he should have still turned his stuff over. Uh, well, that's one thing about George Christie. At least, you know, when he uh, quit, he gave the property back right away. Yes. And as you like know, me, I think that really upsets people right now is it took him three years to do it. Plus, uh, every time... Uh, you know, somebody from the club tried to come collect it, he would call the cops. So that's... <laughs> and that just goes against... That just goes against protocol. Look, man, whether you decide to go a different way or you're put out from your organization, mm -hmm. you turn your stuff over. That's the right thing to do. Don't wait two or three months. Waiting two or three months is the same thing as waiting two or three years. Right. Do it the right way. Be a man. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, what would you say to those out there that are listening to you right now? Uh, what is your outlook on it, the way he did everything? You know, was he supposedly giving people advice and shit? And one of those things, the reason why I started to expose is because we were investigating a few months before we actually did it. And we're finding out all kinds of shit about him. And then when they came to a head, that's, you know, <laughs> when it all started going down. But uh, what would you say about how, you know, he's handled it where he's actually put people in danger? And I don't think BBS really understands that 2% uh, image that they had out there, if that ever showed up on the streets, you know, because there is fantasy world where there's social media, but then there's the real fucking world where shit can exactly. be pretty pretty real quick. I would say, you know, for the cause of it, uh, it was for a good cause. Now, maybe the, the person who decided to take over and, and run it, if he had gave his property back as being a former member of the ALA, that association, whatever his rank was, uh, he should have done that already. Because mm. it's hard to preach something if you have not done it yourself. More like now you know, is that a, now is that actually now does that uh, actually pertain to him being out bad as well? You know, being out bad uh, from an old, very long-standing club as the AOA, I would now I have to question it. You know. What, you know, mm. how could you be out bad from such a good organization if you didn't do something that can't be forgivable? Right. Um, it should, and like you said, the AOA is an old school club. Yes. And I and they take, they're not like these other clubs that just throw people out on bad. They got a whole process they go through with boats. You can even appeal it and the whole nine yards. And, you know. They got a rigorous process for putting people out on bad. So when you know they do it, they do it for a reason. But exactly, ahead, our our club almost follows a similar protocol. If you get put out bad from our club, it's just because you have either worked with law enforcement or you have done something that is unforgivable. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, loyalty. You know, your brothers had better be in your best interest always. Right. You know, old school ways. Uh, for for somebody to get put out of the organization as the AOA, that would, I would say after knowing and investigating and finding out from my own, you got to be a bad fuck up, mm -hmm. and it's hard to follow somebody with such history. From what I found out, that I'm not going to air out here, right. but uh, once you find out for yourself, it's definitely a wow factor, mm -hmm. big time. Right. Well, what a lot of people don't understand, and, you know, you being from Texas and stuff, you probably wouldn't have uh, known about that kind of shit unless you actually seen the stuff like the Sun's Time article this asshole put out there. 
about how, you know, because you got, you know, let's make it clear right now, and I got to put a disclaimer out there because I was a Piston, and I still support a lot of the guys over at AOA. Uh, so the disclaimers out there, everybody knows I got a bias coming from this angle. I've said it time and time again, but the 81 are actually not in Chicago. They're way outside of Chicago. And there was a Sun Times article that came out that he put out there that there might be a biker war between the AOA and the 81. And I've known he's been on live feeds on BBS as far, and as well as the COC Chicago, which, by the way, he took from the real COC Chicago. If people don't know how that happens is there's a person that's an administrator, and he makes the rest uh, moderators, and he didn't kick anybody out and just keep the site. That's how that shit works. So, yes, that was something we found out later on as as well. Right. And we actually had the uh, COC from Chicago on, I think, two episodes ago, and they uh, put their opinion out there. But anyway, he's been going around and saying, well, the city's lost and, you know, the angels are pushing in. And this couldn't be, you know, furthest from the truth. And I know that's street politics and stuff, but what a lot of people don't understand is, and this is why I preach it, the shit that's going on on the internet filters out on the street and people can get hurt. And yes. if, if people in BBS cannot see, you know, regardless who you support, I don't care if you're an 81 supporter, or an AOA supporter, a pagan, or whatever supporter. Anybody who knows anything and has the brains know some people can get hurt and killed. And that ain't necessary. And he's been exactly. pushing that online and BBS, you know, cause I know it's, I, I've seen a lot of this stuff and I still get emails from these people, you know, cause they're, and that's another thing. You guys don't have to email me all the time. I know what kind of fuck up he is. You know, I don't care what he has to say. Everybody knows what he's about. So I don't need the shit to keep filling up my email box. So I just wanted to put that out there. But, yeah. Uh, Anybody who's smart enough to know, you don't support somebody like that. And quite honestly, everybody wonders why he only left after an hour and a half or two hours after he brings all these people in from across the country to this event, and he leaves. What's that telling you? So. <clears throat> well, you know, that's kind of that's kind of exactly you know, uh, you know, trying to pick back up from when we started. That's exactly what was a big eye, uh, you know, like an eye opener. Hmm. And then when he was going on and on and he got into, a, a, you know, he was upset and he, well, y'all got bags and bags full of AOA property. Now, he he may use a different name, but that's for him to use, not for me. Right. You know, after that, I had, you know, if I threw a number, I'd say 120 people. Everybody was just like, hey, whoa, 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 why has he still got property? You know, you know, you don't do that. Mm-hmm. And I and, and and I couldn't answer it. I was like, "Well, hey, I don't know him super well. This is a guy that you know I ran across on a trip up north, right? Uh, but I'll ask." And he, you know, and then after I talked to uh, that that end, I mean, I was kind of—I I don't want to say dumbfounded. I, I never read his book. I didn't know what he wrote in his book. Right. Uh, if I'd have read his book, you know, a few things that got put out. You know, in the last few weeks that I read that he said in his own words, I'd have been like, oh, whoa, Uh, this was a no-no. This was a fuck-up. Right. But with all the publicity and all the people contacting, wanting to know why, I just kind of felt compelled to call and say, hey, you know, that shirt he wore is a shirt anybody in the world can buy. It says support, zero support of nothing. Mm -hmm. It's not not to forget. Now, nine people died that day that were innocent, and it shouldn't have went the way it happened. But from my perspective, I can't say, you know, remember the way well, Waco you can't, you, Well, you can't control yes. it by t yes, 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 <laughs> yes, exactly. I can only put out for what um, I can say. I, know, people, no, that, I know there was a picture circulating of you, and it was you actually in the middle, and then you had yep. Big Pete with his – uh and that's another thing I want to stress out there with Big Pete is he's got that outlaw's tattoo. He's not an outlaw. That should have been gone. It should have been dated. It should have been, you know, blackened out, whatever. 
But again, he calls the cops on everybody, so what the hell? You can't do shit because he, you know, he intentionally uh, put a line right to him. But anyway, then he has another picture with uh, another guy. Uh, I'm not going to mention his name, but he was a Midwest one, uh, Midwest presenter, which is an 81 type of crew. So now everybody's out there thinking that, <laughs> you know, the Kazakhs got this thing going with, uh, you know, are you guys independent or are you guys a support club or how's that work? No, <clears throat> we are 100 percent standalone. Uh, one of the reasons why that, that I wanted to apologize to the AOA is because of one of the oldest, very biggest clubs there is in the U.S. Mm-hmm. We'll give them their respect for that. We, I say we, me, not we, I. I made a mistake by bringing this guy anywhere around any members or, you know, supporters of my club, mm-hmm. uh, without checking this guy out better. But, uh, we don't support any colors other than our colors. Uh, we, we, we have communications with all the clubs. Uh, we haven't had any issues with any clubs. Uh, mm-hmm. and if we're wrong, then we'll say we're wrong because we're men. Right. And if you're a real man and you make a mistake and you can't say, hey, my bad, well, maybe you look at things the wrong way. You ain't mad at all because I took a beating during all this shit because, uh, <laughs> I put, I put, I call them butterball. <laughs> premieres on our show all the time but yeah. i put the dumbass i felt this for the same shift and i've made my uh, mistakes wrong but you know i'm out there you know it's uh 1100 miles from a, around where i live to sh- the chicago land area uh you know there's four I, from what i'm told there's about four million people in chicago you know we let one <laughs> slip through and, and 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 friends it happens Right, right. Well, you know, what's, you know, because, and I'm glad you brought it up that you're in communication with other clubs and stuff like that, because you've been on uh, some truce sites out there, and everybody knows what a biker truce site is, where, you know, they put stuff out on you and crap like that. But you just mentioned that you're in contact with all the clubs, so that means you're following protocol and stuff like that. You're talking to the the big boys or the dominance and all that stuff when you try to establish another charter, right? You know, we just, uh, true, you know, we just, uh, there used to be, uh, the protocol in Texas has been messed up since actually really prior to, you know, uh, Mm. 2015. But it's like I said, uh, if you go back to do things the right way, it's better to say, hey, we're letting you know we're here. We're not here to bother you. We would rather, mm. you know, open line of communication. That's the right way to do it. That's the way it's always been done. Instead right. of just all of a sudden pop up, hey, I got four guys. I live in Oklahoma. Or, hey, I got four guys. I live in Minnesota. Or, hey, I got three guys. I'm in Louisiana. That's, that's, that's not, that's not what you're supposed to do. And that's, right. you know, I just refuse to, to, for it to go that way. And, 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 if it was, if this club was going to go that direction and just pop up here and pop up there, I would have nothing to do with it. Right, uh, right. I've done, I've, I've been in this life a, a long time. I've mm-hmm. been there, you know, do a lot. And if right. it's not going to be done the right way, I'll have nothing to do with it. Well, it's, you know what, it's awesome to hear something like that. Uh, well, especially, uh, you know, up this area where the AOA was, you know, born here. Charlie was born here. Exactly. And has uh, the supporters here. And by no means uh, anything that uh, Pete's trying to put out there is bullshit because they're very much alive and freaking well out here. And as uh, exactly. the Confederation has said, they actually doubled in numbers since Pete's left. But, uh, it, you know, I think it's very important for our audience to hear that, you know, you're going about it the right way where you got these other idiots out there that are trying to just go in there and say, hey, we got a charter there. And <laughs> in areas that have uh, been, you know, occupied since freaking 1930s. <laughs> so, exactly. If you so want to do things the right way? Wonderful. Yes, if you want to do things the right way, then be a man about it. You know, uh, I'm not calling no club a pop-up. But I will say I've seen a lot just pop up this state, pop up this state, pop up this state. And I sit here, I'm like, damn, you're almost just asking these guys for, you know, to run into a wrecking ball for uh, for no reason. Mm -hmm. You know, just be respectful. Right. Well, what I don't understand with these pop-up clubs is 
they have to go – they go around, you know, anytime you see a pop-up club, they're taking pictures in their front yard. They're not out there. They're not with the other clubs. And they don't realize that actually getting involved with the COC and getting involved with the dominant in the area is going to do them better. You know, it's going to help them with their clubhouse parties. You know, you're going to be able to go to other parties. And you don't have to sit there and hide out. And that's exactly. one thing I never understood about pop-up clubs. Why just go out there and, you know, okay, good, you got a charter of six freaking guys. You really think you're going to take on a club that's been around since the 1930s or the 40s or 50s? Ab- Are you fucking absolutely. Dumb? <laughs> absolutely. Uh, you know, I, uh, you know, and, and people have asked, oh, well, you know, you know, where'd y'all come from? Oh, you know, it's not a particular place we came from. But, you know, what what we are now is something that we was going to do from 2015. Mm-hmm. Uh, we just had a, a tragedy that, that happened before, you know, that we couldn't control. Right. Uh, so we weren't going to just pop up here and pop up there. This was already mm-hmm. a done deal. Right. You know? Right. Well, I'm glad you put that out there because, uh, you know, a lot of people, you know, you're putting yourself apart from uh, – those other clubs and they're mostly yes. the foreign clubs that come in and that's that's a real shame because some of these foreign clubs have some badass freaking history behind them and to try to start it up like they are in the united states just kills the name that it, a it, lot of their it, guys it, die for <laughs> it is never you know what from what i've watched from what i've known and i don't have a, you know decades of history in this i've got 10 mm. uh there's some clubs from from other from like you said from other countries there are some hardcore clubs and 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 I understand they're they're wanting to to uh expand but right. nine times out of ten they ended up expanding with the wrong people right well a lot of people are out bad or they're just handing their patches yep. out and they don't know how bad that looks here <laughs> if it's easy to get it's easy to give. Right. Well, that you know what, and I know you can't take positions on this, but this is something we do as a biker news site. Uh, you take uh, this kinfolk, for example. You got these guys. You got videos of people burning their shit online. You got people, you know, ex-members, you know, shitting on their stuff, and that's because you gave it to them. Yeah. <laughs> they didn't have to do uh, shit to bore it. I'll say my standpoint on that is. I don't like seeing any club uh, members uh, doing things like that. You know, right. uh, I just hate I hate to watch that because I tell you what, uh, six eight years ago that shit didn't fly. It didn't happen. No. And that's the only thing we this club. I'd have a thousand members right now today if I took in everybody that I wanted to, but that's not the right way to do it. Right. Well, that's, you're actually uh, doing no. it the right way. <laughs> you're exactly. actually doing it the right way. They can way. say what they want, but we do it the right way. Mm. Well, you know, that's another thing. If you have to worry about what people are putting out about your club, because you know what? When it comes down to it, you got supporters on all freaking sides that are talking shit about everybody except the freaking club. Yeah. <laughs> Something I, I used to say, sometimes a supporter can cause more grief than ever needed. I understand that they're wanting to support their cause, but sometimes a supporter can cause more trouble than anybody. Exactly. You know? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like, you know what I had to do to get that support patch? <laughs> oh, right. Yeah, you well, got $10 do and bought it. <laughs> <laughs> you don't understand. The president of that chapter signed it. Well, good for him. <laughs> you still didn't do shit for it. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's great that you want to support your club, but don't go out there and cause them all the fucking headaches. Yeah, there's no need. You know? Well, you know, I actually if, feel sorry. If there's sorry a need, then there's a need. <laughs> you know, if there's a need, the then there's a need, but. Right. Well, when I was in the Pistons before I left in the early 2000s, man, this shit didn't fly, and now I feel sorry oh, no. for everybody with this social media bullshit. So, yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, really... you know, I kind of feel compelled to call because I'm like, good grief. Mm-hmm. Man, my phone hadn't blowed up this much since the first time I got married. Jeez, right. <laughs> well, you know, I really appreciate you putting out your side of the story because it actually goes a long way. And hopefully with people listening to the program, 
that they'll get it out there, they'll share all of it, and, you know, you guys, because I know you guys actually put it on your website, and that's a big thing when a club has to put it on their website. Uh, that's telling you a lot right there, that, yeah, hey, you don't want just... no association with them, we have nothing to do with them, but... The man, the man had good intentions. I'm, I'm, I'm sure he did, because for the cause of it. But you mm. just can't lead something if you don't walk that walk, man. Right. Well, that's the only place that uh, I'll kind of disagree with because I know who the fuck he is and what he's done. And gotcha. You know what? <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> and I if just... you read his own book, uh, you know, there's always something behind a scam with him. You know, if you read the. Uh, if you ever, you know, and I don't recommend it because it's nothing but a bunch of bullshit, but, uh, you know, in there there's a page where he talks about uh, starting a fake club up, and he was selling patches to people, and he was taking their money, and here you got a fake fucking club out there. You got a bunch of guys running around thinking they're a part of the club, but they're really not. And when BBS brought up the fact that, hey, do you want to sell patches and shit like that, that's everybody that, uh, and I think that's one of the reasons why the black and white came out, because they wanted to make sure people knew, hey, this ain't, this guy's don't got good intentions here. He's trying to make fucking money, <laughs> and he's going to exactly. use you to do it. And I think that's And I read something, I read something where that was put out, that he did that in his book, and man, that's just a, uh, when somebody says that somebody is, is using their particular organization to better their own needs and wants, mm-hmm. man, if you wrote it or your publisher, I don't know how that works when you write a book, but if you said it and it's put in a book, oh, that's something. Oh, he actually, club. Yeah, he actually went through it. Again. It was called The Cosmic Writers, and uh, – and this was before, and thank God it was before the internet, because he used to place the ads in the Easy Rider shit. Uh, but gotcha. if, he had, if he had internet back then, oh man, god damn, it would have been all over the place. But people could have got hurt from people that up for failure. Exactly. Yeah. It sets people up yeah. for failure. So, when he came out and said, because uh, again, people were emailing the shit out of me, hey, he's talking about patches and stuff like this, you know, he even talked about it in his book, what do you think? And I'd be like, what do you have to fucking ask me for, man? Don't you got your own brain? <laughs> he was out there doing, you know, the evidence is there. You guys can take it or freaking leave it. If you go out there and you're wearing one of his fucking patches and get your head busted up, then that's your fault. <laughs> so, exactly. And he'll be sitting there collecting the money because, you know, he came out with the excuse, well, you know, I don't need that kind of money. <laughs> guys, he's not a gangster. I'm going to put that out to everybody right now. He's not a gangster. He's never been a fucking gangster in the Chicago area. You want to know real gangsters, then, you know, you talk about uh, Joey the Clown or freaking Iupa or any of them. Those are gangsters, <laughs> not people. Yeah, absolutely. Because <laughs> actually, and it's been put out there, the AOA is not about that shit. They're about biking and brotherhood. And exactly. <laughs> So, and if you're going, you know, and if you're going to start up a fake club for your own personal needs and wants, well, then you have your best interest. You don't have your club's best interest. That's wrong. Well, from it's what I was about uh, told, uh, they didn't even know about it or they didn't just stop the shit. Oh, exactly. You know, you just, you're supposed to keep it, you know, it's about your brothers. Mm-hmm. You know, and be there to I watch know your brothers. That. Right. And I'm by no yeah. means a spokesman for him. I'm just freaking paraphrasing yeah. what I've heard. So I just wanted to kind of get it cleared up, you know, uh, for whatever reason he did it. You know, mm-hmm. uh, maybe it's his own uh, hard feelings for what he's already done. I don't know. Uh, the cause of it was for a good cause. Or maybe could have been. But uh you can't walk that walk, man, and you can't preach it if you don't do it. That's just right. Well, what do you take, say to everybody in BBS right now who, uh, you know, because he's closed off the group from what I'm told. He still don't understand people email the shit out of us, but uh, they're just more quiet, I guess, about it. But uh, what do you I would tell say... people in BBS right now where those <laughs> who uh, want to still stand by them? And that's another thing before we go. How can you be in a club and support him? I don't understand. Can you tell me? I will say this. Uh, once you find out from 
the association that he was part of. Uh, you can email a website. Surely I, I know they'll probably answer. Luckily, I had different contacts. But as an individual, if you seek out and get an answer from 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 their side, uh, you'll understand. Club wise, mm-hmm. stay away. You know, mm-hmm. uh, to the members who are there listening to him, I understand that he probably reaches out and and and, and you can align with some of the stories. But if he did it the wrong way, as he did, and he got put out for the different things that he wrote in his book that he did while he was in that club and then put out the stuff in his book, then out bad is out bad. Mm -hmm. He's one guy. Right. You know, get away from it. Um, Mm -hmm. I can't, you know, I can't have nobody in my association or a supporter or a friend of the club that's going to be in line or... uh, be cool with him or what he represents. Mm-hmm. He just should have done it the right way. He was a he was what he says. I was a boss for so many years, and he already knew better. He already knew that w- once that decision come down, and they decided he he didn't need to be in the club. Should have just gave his stuff back. Right. Me and everybody in my club did. Mm-hmm. Or, or, or for the people, and there's people in, 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 in our club that has hung around a prospect that has never been in a club, but there are members of my club that was members with me in our prior club. Mm-hmm. Give it back. You can't give it back and teach, oh, man, you know, if, if you decide to just part yourself from a club, whether it be on your terms or theirs, give the property back because it never belongs to you. Never. Right. It belongs to that club. Exactly. And I don't mean support gear, support shirts. You know that that's what anybody can buy, but you give your clubs in sign of your back for whatever mm. association it is. Right. Because if you don't and you do it for the wrong way, well then you, it's just wrong. You, mm. it, I, I don't just don't see where you can write that wrong. Right. Coming from right. that kind of a club and the respect that club has, uh, hey, hey man, you just can't get past it. I would just exactly. tell the guys in the guys in DBS, uh I'd really take a second thought. Reach out, find out the reason why he's put out bad. Right. Well actually they uh the AOA National and AOA Illinois made their statements. You can find that uh on uh, YouTube or you can find it on our website as well as the Confederation of Clubs came out. So you don't only have the AOA, but you got the whole Confederation of Chicago Clubs out there too as well putting out their statement. So uh, you're right on that. But uh, with that uh, in closing, do you have anything else you'd like to put out there about the club or any of that so people don't uh, – No, man. You, you know, I just uh, I just like to say, you know uh, – you know, uh, I feel as if me, uh, we, we, uh, we're just trying to make a, a, a you know, a, a wrong or right. And that mm-hmm. me and my club want to apologize to the AOA. You know, right, we, right. uh, we found out, we found out and uh, we, uh, you know, we just apologize. Rock on. You know, to awesome. Anybody else, uh, if you're going to associate or align yourself with him or an association of, of, of him, just double check it, man. Uh, mm. No need to. Because there's some really. real world consequences. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. You know, it's just like uh, you know, if you decide to wear this two percent deal out, man. Come on, I understand that he says, well, only two percent of the stuff on social media is real. Well, okay, mm. cool. There's no need in making a patch of it. Right. Well, the yeah. problem with that, uh, that Most thing all is shit. only two percent of the stuff shit is you... real is. He's the one who wasn't real in the first place with everybody. <laughs> Man, if you just if you don't walk it, you can't preach it. There may mm. be a better term, but that's a term from good old East Texas. If right you don't walk old. the walk, you can't preach it. That's old Texas boys right there, man. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> well, I appreciate you coming on, Mac, and uh, letting the Kazakh one percenter side uh, know and. Uh, you know what? Before I go, Kazakh one percenters are not the same as ugly man Kazakhs, right? No, sir, we're not. Uh, okay, I just kind of like make I sure said, that you know, there's yes, yes, their center patch is completely different. They wear their MCQ up under their name. Mm-hmm. We wear our MCQ 
to the right side and our 1% patch on the back. That displays us as them being ugly man Cossacks, and we are the Cossack 1%ers of Texas. Rock on. Um, well, with that, uh, I really appreciate you coming on again, like I said, and uh, hopefully everybody's out there listening uh, got an idea or has an idea of uh, – you know, the Kazakh one percenter's position, not only on Pete, but uh, some other stuff that was discussed here today and how they view protocol and how they talk with uh, other clubs and stuff like that, yes. how they just don't go in like these other clubs do and say, hey, we're opening up a chapter. No, they actually follow the protocol and stuff like that. So yes. with that, I appreciate um, you all. Go ahead, Matt. No, no, I was just going to, you know, just add to it and say, you know, we – uh we are our own club. Uh, we respect and, uh, all the big clubs who've been here for, for decades and decades, all of them. Uh, I mean, you know, that's just something that's very important to us. You know, we can't help with, with what has happened with other clubs who started up and went here and went there. That's that mm-hmm. club. That's not our club. We're in other states and in other states we're in, I would say, uh, the dominance, if you would even throw that name, I would just say we're there. People know we're there. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's all I got to say on it. Uh, we ain't out to bother nobody who don't bother us. Right. Right, on. Well, cool. There you guys have it. And uh, after the commercial break, we have another episode of The Adventures of Butterball. With that, I'll talk to you later, Mac. All right, man. Go have a good one. You too. Motorcycle Madhouse with Jay and Tommy went about Chikari. Now, two days a week. Tuesdays and Saturdays at 1 p.m. Central Standard Time. Listen and download all episodes for free on HarleyBikerNews.com. Or the show is available on all major podcasting platforms like the iHeartRadio, iTunes, Stitcher, and more. <laughs> This is James Hollywood Machikari. Hop on over and check out our new YouTube channel where you can hear Motorcycle Madhouse and watch the Biker Angle. You can look up the new channel by going to our website, HarleyLiberty.com, or Insane Throttle Biker News in the YouTube channel search bar. Don't forget to have that prospect hit the subscribe button and that bell in the upper right-hand corner so you will always be up to date with the new channel content. Motorcycle Madhouse with James Hollywood Machikari. Yep, yep, good to yep. go. Hollywood's Motorcycle Madhouse on iHeartRadio. Your mouth all glued up with honey juice. I asked you a question. It's time for the Adventures of Butterball. A biker so fat that when he jumps on a scale, it says to be continued. We now give you the man that makes every motorcycle say, oh shit, when he comes walking towards them. This is the Adventures of Butterball. And we'd like to thank Matt from the Kazakh One Percenters for coming on, giving their club side of the story. We also uh, want to thank them for letting us know their feelings on Big Pete and what he did with everybody, and also his advice to Bikers Better School. But right now, we have the Adventures of Butterball, and it's going to be uh, an interview about him and his new book, how to rape a squirrel seems like butterballs out there on the books trail trying to push his stuff but ends up with the police on him and at the ending it is quite fantastic i guess uh what goes around comes around with the karma and here we go with the adventures of butterball Hello and welcome to this exclusive interview with Sp- Name and address withheld We got him in the building right now and he's going to talk about his new book that he made I Like to Rape Squirrels Any comments on your new book? Mother? Yeah, I got the idea when, you know I, I had been doing this thing for like years You know, and I'm like I've been doing this long enough to tell a story Like how I started out my humble beginnings Going to zoos And then work my way up to public locations And eventually... 
getting the title of Squirrel King. Because as you know, if you rape enough squirrels, you automatically become king because you've asserted your dominance, which in the animal kingdom means uh, like uh, sort of a royalty status that you'll get. Uh, yeah, it's it's very great. I'm allowed into a lot of secret squirrel locations that not a lot of people get to see. So it, it's really just a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, and I'm very honored. Once-in-a-lifetime, indeed. We do have the police here. You are going to be arrested, though, unfortunately. But as long as your uh, reign was long enough for you to be proud wait, of what? yourself, uh, so I want you to go ahead and put your hands behind what? your back. No, Cindy, run! Get out! <laughs> um... You wouldn't rape a guy with glasses, right? Oh, you would? Wait, something about what I said doesn't sound right. Something about what you said doesn't sound right either. Oh, no! Blair Psycho Madhouse with James Hollywood and Machi Kari. Yep, yep, good to yep. go. Now, let's take this show to the next level with our up-and-coming band segment. Remember, you can listen and download all episodes for free on HarleyBikerNews.com or available on all major podcast platforms like iHeartRadio, iTunes, Stitcher, and more. Oh my god! Fuck! I love anime so much, I can't hide it! I get so fucking pumped when I watch anime! Yeah! Anime's for nerds. Fuck yeah it is! Check out my favorite jacket! Oh damn! 
Yeah, it's from a goddamn anime. It's about a gay-ass swim team. What'd you do this weekend? I stayed home and cried because of anime. It was beautiful and fulfilling. Karasuno! Welcome to my home. Bam! Anime! This wall scroll is bigger than me! This whole wall is devoted to one anime! Ah! 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 Fuck, I love anime. Hello, Fat Daddy Rabbit here from Wild Hogs, Easy Riders, Live to Ride, and the Grumpy Old Bikers on Facebook. We are proud sponsors of Hollywood's Motorcycle Madhouse. Listen to them every Tuesday to Saturday at 1 p.m. Central Standard Time on iHeartRadio and all major podcasting platforms. Yes, sir, that's what I'm talking about. Peace. Hollywood's Motorcycle Madhouse on iHeartRadio. Motorcycle Madhouse with James Hollywood Bachari. Now, two days a week. Tuesdays and Saturdays at 1 p.m. Central Standard Time. Listen and download all episodes for free on HarleyBikerNews.com. Or the show is available on all major podcasting platforms like the iHeartRadio, iTunes, Stitcher, and more. Joined by Kim and Marcy over at the Biker Hangout Corner on Facebook. How are you guys doing? Fine, James. We're doing great here. I said Marcy's in the house. It's a miracle. Hey, girl. <laughs> <laughs> well, today we're going to talk about women in the biker lifestyle. And I actually wanted to bring up one thing right off the bat. And you guys are doing awesome over at the Biker Hangout Corner. You guys are growing it real strong right now. And I seen the other day where... You had to kind of put them in check with all the pictures and stuff like that. And it's mm-hmm. like, don't these people know that Facebook's on a tirade right now where they're shooting all kinds of pages down? Mm-hmm. I know, and the men just freaking, I got reams in the ass from all these damn men because they want to see tits. And you know what? They want to see tits, go to the other site, or go to the strip of all. Right. Well, you know, the biker lifestyle is a lot more than just tits, so. That's what I'm trying to, you know, me and Marcy are trying to point out. And me and Marcy, we try to mix it up so we can have a little bit of that going on for the guys, too, you know. Go ahead, Mm -hmm. Marcy, speak. Well, honey, I'm just just letting the bulldog take over like I always do. (laughs) (laughs) Can't beat everybody in check, you know. Uh-huh. Right. I'm I'm the one that tries to be nice, but it doesn't seem to work. So I let Kim get her bulldog temper out. I am yeah, handy. It <laughs> <laughs> it's you good cop, bad nice cop over there. And you know what? Becomes to be nice, and I ain't going for fucking nice. You know, I've been nice my whole life, and you know what? I'm gonna get you nowhere. And I'm trying to keep Marcy that. But sometimes I do go overboard because sometimes my temper just gets the best of me, but I can't help it. I like it. But that's the way we we work, James. We try to comp, you know, cool each other down because she's stronger where I'm not so strong and I'm more logical when she's in a temper. <laughs> you know. <laughs> How did you guys get together with uh, the idea of Biker Hangout? Well, I actually, if you don't mind, Mark, I actually started it, and then I had some prison some assholes and admins, and then Marcy sent me a picture of a big pucker and called me in it. I fell in love with her after that because I realized she had such a great personality. And I took my daughter back to college, and I said, Marcy, I want you as admin in the group. And Marcy, and they got rid of all the assholes that we had as admins and everything. And Marcy has done an outstanding job that I decided to make her my partner. Rock on. <laughs> awesome. Good job, Marcy. <laughs> well, thank you, Jim. I, I mean, I try. Like I said, I try to keep people updated with the new events going on, news in the, yeah, news in the biker community, anything that would be interesting to a biker, you know. Mm-hmm. But then we try to keep it fun too. 
but as you know, with Facebook, some of the fun has to be curbed because after all these work, we don't want to lose that pace. Right. What do you guys think about Facebook and all the all these uh, social media groups going after uh, pages right now? I know, and people don't understand it, you know, and they think we're just being women in control, but you know what? We are, Actually, we are being women in control because it's all fucking group, and nobody likes it. They can leave. There's always somebody else knocking at the door. Mm-hmm. There's, there's way too much censorship in this world today right now, in my opinion. You know, right. we have censorship on everything we do. And you just have to be able to outsmart the people that are censoring stuff. Mm. Yeah, it's so true. I mean, I would end up in jail if I, you know, if I, you know, I would I would end up in jail if, if it wasn't censored. So I have to be good. You know, if I have to be good, everybody's being fucking good. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> well, as you know, as you girls know, uh, actually, Twitter just banned uh, Alex oh. Jones for life. What do you guys think really? of that? Yeah. Holy shit, I didn't know that. You know, I think, you know, personally with how the tech companies are getting, I think they're too powerful for their own good. Well, yeah. They, yeah. They, they are. And, you know, Facebook is going to start doing that also. They're going to start banning people for life, and they're going to, They've already started taking the groups away and pages away and mm-hmm. and things like that. So, you know, it's the society we live in today. Oh, you, you know, there's too many crowd babies, too many censors, and people are not free to do just what they want to do. Exactly. Mm. Exactly. Right. Well, you know. I got something good happening, too, which I didn't get to talk to Marcia last night because I was too busy partying and out and doing lap dances and having a great old time. Oh, my God, I should be ashamed of myself. No. Um, <laughs> I'm actually, I'm getting a bike, and I'm going to pick it up this weekend on Saturday. I'm finally getting my own bike again. And um, me and a couple of girls were talking and that I've been riding with. I've been riding this on my one friend's bike. And we're thinking about... My so I'm going to do it, but we just got to think when a starting our own bike is girl group, you know what I'm saying? And of course, men can join, but it's just going to be, it's going to be a cool group. We just got to make a plan and think and, you know, do, but we were talking about this last night, so. Well, you know, wow, Kim, congrats on that, Kim, getting your own bike. Exactly. You know, that there's been a 49% increase in female riding groups. Mm-hmm. You know, in the last 25 years. Mm-hmm. So that's very significant. And, you know, as far as the female rider goes, there's over a 53% increase in female riders since 1950. And yeah. now, now we have the manufacturers actually trying to design bikes more female friendly. Well, the bike I'm getting, the bike I'm getting, Marcy, that is a definitely a definite family female bike. Um, I'm getting, um, Jerry, I'm getting the 2015 Street 750. It has less than 200 miles on it, and it was one of my patients that got sick and can't ride, so she's giving it to me for five grand. But I tell you, she's the shortest me. That bike was made for me. I can hold the weight. I can balance it with my little tiny short ass, both feet on the ground. I mean, that's a woman's bike. You know what I'm saying? If I've ever seen one. And I, I love it. And they are starting. Because I went to Harley. I was going to go get one. But they are, my girlfriend got a fat boy in 2018. She paid $24,000 for the thing. I'm like, bullshit. I ain't paying that much for a bike. <laughs> you and me agree both on that. <laughs> I won't pay more than uh, freaking uh, 10 G's for any of my Harleys I had because uh, the yeah, price of that exactly. with Harley is just but it's just out of control. So basically, I stay used, and I like the older stuff. But you actually got – you hit it on the point where more women are – getting involved riding their own bikes because when I started see I came up through club scene and stuff like that and it was you know rare to ever see a woman on a bike of her own 
but it's I know. really it's really a good thing now that women I you know personally I think it's sexy as hell but <laughs> once I got over my old uh, ways <laughs> of uh, women on the <laughs> back. <laughs> well, last night, last night was really cool because we went to two different places and um, when we got there, I hope it. Marky, I haven't even talked to you since last night because I had to get up for work. And like I said, I've been very hungover all day today. Um, what happened? Oh, everybody is, like, coming up to me. And they're like, Kim, you run such a great group and bikers hang out. I mean, so many people. I'm not even exaggerating. I didn't even realize I had half these members from North Carolina. Like, I know I have a lot. But it's just you just don't realize it. And people were coming up to me and... Even if you look on the, um, one of the posts, Marcy, um, Randy Floyd, he lives by me. He's like, well, he goes, I can't believe I missed you last night. And, you know, then all of a sudden they were like, where are you going? And we were like, we're going to go to Extreme for a little while. So it was me and the other two girls. And all of a sudden, about five guys followed us on their bikes. They put us in the middle. We had two behind us to make sure we were safe. And then we had the rest up in front. And I videoed it. I'm going to post it. It was the most coolest friggin' thing they could have done for us. I thought that was sweet. But it's like, you know, everybody's really starting to notice this group. And I'm so impressed. Oh, that's awesome. Well, I know it's a great group, but, you know, I watch it all the time. And you guys are growing in numbers. Uh, what kind of numbers you got now? We have currently over six thousand seven hundred and something right now. Oh, oh girl, we're that's going. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and I started with thirty members. I started with thirty members, and I tell you, like I said, Marty, I, I, she is the greatest person. I'm telling you, I'm so glad I asked her to be admin, and me and her just started talking and asking questions about, you know the admins that I had because I didn't really know them as well as she did. And, you know, Marcy really never said anything negative, but she let me know some things. And um, that was it. I made my choice. I got rid of everybody. And then it, it's just been me and Marcy. I did try with a man and he was a friend, but then he thought of pulling shit. And then I did take him back again because he promised me he would be good because he really enjoyed the group. <laughs> But Marcy pinpoints them because I'm just a sucker for being nice sometimes. And this is why I don't like being nice. And he was just trying to get in my group so he could destroy me and Marcy. And it wouldn't work, so. Oh, one of them type. (laughs) But, you you know, you have to deal with those very, as I tell Kim, we have to deal with them a little more professionally. And just mm-hmm. get it done and over with, and it's like cutting the poison out, you know? Right, And it right. was like cutting the poison out, you know? The black widow didn't sting him hard enough. <laughs> <laughs> well, you girls also got a new page, Harley Davidson Writers, that you guys got, got, got up and going. Tell us about that one. That one I am trying my best to keep up with, and... Trying to put new events on there, you know, kind of keeping it more of the motorcycle and events and trying to keep the memes out of there. Mm-hmm. But my way of thinking, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, come on, I'm going to post a naked picture of me tonight. You watch. Everybody's gonna you I'm posting one of you too, Marcy, so you better take a naked picture. They're going to have a heart attack, no. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> but like I said, James, I'm trying to keep it, you know, more informational for right now. I mean, if they want to have fun, they can go over into Biker's Hangout, and Kim will give them all the fun they want. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and then you, and then you get then you get some damn psychos, you know, like people want to be nice and they want, you know, like they'll be like, oh, let's ride. I want to take you out. You know, not even as like dating, just want to because of the group. Can I say yes sometimes? Oh, yes, uh-huh. I had a freaking guy. Marcy will tell you. Oh, my Lord, have mercy. He thought he was married to me. And I never even met him. And he put on my Facebook. 
Well, how do you have to ignore him, mate? I'm like, really? Blocked. Kicked him out of my group. I ain't going riding with you, bitch. <laughs> you get some psychos out there, man. Trust me. <laughs> I know. And you know what? Small team, me are the type of women. Nobody's going to control us. Nobody. So that's good stuff right there. Where do you girls think uh, it's all going for women in uh, the biker lifestyle? I, I think um, it's going places. It, it is. It, you're going to see more female riding groups. You're going to see more... Um, you know, female motorcycle designs, you're going to see the the females, you know, females do a lot on the rallies and things behind the scenes right now, but you're going to see them moving up in front of the scenes with mm-hmm. these rallies and things that will be in the future because they're wanting to be more equal. Mm-hmm. In the world of motorcycles, and I know that piece is coming off. I've had men tell me for years women shouldn't be riding, but I've been riding since I was ten years old. I mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, but I can see them. Hey, go ahead. <laughs> I can ride in one girl. Huh? Huh? That's all the truth. Honey, I ride everything. So just I hear you. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I love you, you you just like the widow over there Marcy man you got that spunk I love it <laughs> oh she does don't let her fool you you know what she can be real serious but let me tell you something I'm, I'm a perfect I, I, no I'm a perfect southern lady now come on now you know better than that. I was choked oh my god and I didn't even have anything in my mouth and I was choked what the hell <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, Marcy, those uh, southern ladies are the ones who came up with the rebels' uh, scorn when you mess with a woman. Let me tell you. <laughs> uh-huh. Exactly. We're as sweet as we can be until you mess with us, and then we're just going to smile sweetly at you and make sure you never forget. <laughs> That's exactly yeah, they are right. right. People I end up with end up dying, so you know I must be safe doing something. <laughs> oh God, forgive me. Oh, oh Lord. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> believe it or not, Marcy. Believe it or not, that didn't sound too swift. Marcy is actually the one really with the brains. I mean, I have brains and I know things, but. She does a lot of research on things, too, because she squeezes that time in because she's always, you know, she's available with a computer. I'm always working. You know, I, mm-hmm. do, I do private well, therapy, I, so. I work all day long. Now, don't get <laughs> shut your ass. I work very hard, you know. I, I do, too. I try to keep money out of men's pockets. I got That's a damn 94-year-old cool. man that keeps telling me to get my britches off, you know, every day. <laughs> <laughs> no lie. I swear to God on my daughter, this old man said to me, he told me to get up on the table and he wants to eat me. I said, you better get your ass out of here. <laughs> oh, my it's okay. The shit I got to deal with. 94 years old. Go figure. Well, that's <laughs> what you need to do what I do, Kim. I just talk sweetly to them, get their money out of their wallets and... <laughs> the there you go. To him. I didn't talk sweetly to him. I told him he better cut his shit out. I'm going to kick his ass across the room. And of course, he loved it. He thought it laughing. But yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> I got a lot to deal with. I got to worry about shit. But she, you no, know, she really, she is awesome. She is the one that will go to things. I mean, I know things, and I post shit like that too. But she's really good, Marcy. Well, Man, thank you. you guys got an awesome thing going there, let me tell you. <laughs> you really do. Thank you. And now you get your own bike, and, you know, you guys ride, oh, and yeah. it's just awesome stuff. Oh, yeah, I know. And I, I, you know what? My goal is to ride to Illinois and take Marty and me and her go ride it. That's my goal. Well, if you come up to Illinois, I'll have you, uh, you guys got a place, and we'll go out there, party it up, show you around the city, and... There's nowhere else well, better than uh, ride a uh, scooter than down Lakeshore Drive in Chicago at night, man. It's oh, hell no. 
Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, hey, I, get no. All the, I get that all the time. People are scared to drive in Chicago. <laughs> well, so, they are idiots out here. I'm telling you, when I first moved up this way, I got on a plane and went to Chicago and got mm-hmm. off in, um, what is that, where the train goes, you know? Uh, Union the station, and stuff. station. Yeah, Union Station or whatever in Chicago. I turned around, got off that train, turned around, got right back on and got my ass right back to Stanley. I'm like, uh uh-uh. uh. <laughs> <laughs> See what happens when you don't throw up, when you don't throw up in Long Island, you, you kind of get scooped. Ooh, I did, so nothing scares me. Shit. <laughs> uh, it, well, <laughs> well, you're there, right there by New York City, so it ain't nothing coming to Chicago for you, Kenny. <laughs> it's so cool. hell, is it? You know, I got, I had people freaking sitting on the subway, you know, just doing crazy crap and on and on and on. It's just, oh, my Lord. But it's all good. Bring them on. <laughs> Rock there, there, are, there are several places in Chicago I'd love to say, but. Mm-hmm. I would never go to Chicago by myself again. Yeah, yeah, I don't blame you. Yeah. Everything <laughs> in Chicago is good downtown. Once you get out lying, then you're looking at Chirac. So. Mm-hmm. 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 Well, you know, the last so, uh, question I got for you girls before uh, we got to go to a commercial break is, okay. I'm going to ask each one of you is, what kind of advice would you have for a little girl or teenager who – would like to get her own bike, gets, you know, loves being around motorcycles and stuff like that, but keep, keep them positive where, you know, they don't lose hope when guys start, you know, banging on them and stuff that women can't do this or women can't do that. Well, that's one of my things that I have taught my daughter in all honesty. And Marcy will tell you, um, with how I am with my daughter, uh, I always tell my daughter, you know, I have faith in you. I always want you to make the right choice. She's going to take the riding class, and um, she's going to ride. But I told her, I said, you don't, if you go out with a man that's a biker, or I basically tell her to stay away from the guys in the club. That's one thing I do do. But I always tell her, you're your own woman. Don't ever let anybody tell you you cannot do anything. If you, you know, if you want to drive an 18-wheeler, you can do it. If you want to drive a bike, you can do it. You know, nobody can take that away from you but you. And that's my piece of advice. Go ahead, Marcy. She has better advice than me. <laughs> better advice, I don't know. I have, I have two older daughters that both ride, and they have been riding, and I have always expressed um, to them that there is nothing in this world they cannot do. Mm-hmm. And for anyone to tell you you cannot do it, you beat your ass up and you show them you can and you just keep going and don't let the negative get into your head. You just do what makes you happy. Yeah, um, and it's true. It's so true. And that's like, even with Lauren, it's like, um, I've always let that child make her own decisions. And as long as they were appropriate, I would allow her to do it. And even as far as I always told her, you give respect, you get respect. Somebody don't give it back to you, you don't have to give it back to you. I don't care how old you are. Right well, on. But you don't want them in confrontations with people that tell them they can't ride. You just well, you know yeah. that they can do whatever they want to do. And they exactly. just kind of, I don't know, I always told my girls just to ignore them and get on the bike and ride. Well, you know what, Doc? That's what I've told Warren. As far as everything in general, and this is why I'm letting her do this with the bike and everything, because I don't want her to be afraid or not feel like she can't do it, because she loves bikes. And I want my daughter to, I want her to carry on a legacy, hopefully, if I leave one. But, like, for instance, really quick, so I know you say you have to go to commercial. Lauren's been having issues at her college. The girl, uh, giving her a hard time because she's too busy with her schoolwork and she's RA of the dorm and, you know, they're all ignoring her now where they used to be her best friends. And I said to her, I said, you know what, Lauren? You're going to be a special needs therapist. I said, and you're going to be making the bucks. I said, and these girls are either, I hate to say it, going to be high on drugs because that's what they want to do. Or they're going to have a man taking care of them. I said, and you're not going to have any of those things. You're going to get everything on your own. You know, and that's what I teach her. 
rock on. That is awesome. Well, you know what, girls? You know what? That was an awesome discussion. Always fun with you guys. I love having you on. Makes my day when we ever be have you guys on the Madhouse. But uh, for those out there listening, this is uh, Marcy and Kim. They are the admins and owners of Biker Hangout uh, Corner over on Facebook. You got to go check it out. Just don't piss them off because you will have a woman scorn over there. Well, that's it for this week's episode of Motorcycle Madhouse. Don't forget to go over to Insane Throttle's new YouTube channel and check me out over on Biker Angle. Also get your daily dose of biker news every morning at HarleyLiberty.com. If you haven't done so already, go like the new Motorcycle Madhouse Facebook page. And until next week, I'm James Hollywood Machikari. And remember, keep that throttle cracked wide open.